Hi, Emmy. How are you? Hi, I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. Thanks for asking. How's the day so far? Been a little bit slow. It's been nice. And the, weather, the, the weather was nice, actually. Today. Yeah, it was today. Yeah. I think there's um, there's been an adverse kind of weather in Sydney. They've been raining. Yes. Yeah. All up, um, my family is in New South Wales, so all up the East Coast has been a bit crazy with the rain and the flooding. And... Uh, yeah. that's, that's bad, isn't it? Because they've been experiencing a flood as well. I think the New Oh, uh, yeah. All up the, uh, particularly the East Coast, um, like everywhere is really low lying. So it doesn't take much for them to um, experience flooding. Yeah, that's um, true. Yeah. Hope things will be getting better. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's a bit, uh, I think most people in that area are pretty used to it. Um, but yeah, it's pretty, um, these ones in particular, mm. um, in comparison to other ones, have been pretty, pretty, um, yeah. Drastic, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but some other parts in the, the particularly if you look into the the flood and the affected um, some part of Queensland. Yeah. Um, that Queensland. is really bad. Yeah. yeah. I feel feel really yeah. bad. I saw the saw the documentary on that. Yeah, and particularly mm -hmm. because it's the the CBD. Like, mm -hmm. like I think um, that's kind of what um, oh. made it make news so much, is because it's that's that's not. Yeah, uh, very normal. I lived in Brisbane for about six years and never saw that. So, all right. And and some some um people were not actually uh, insured. The, the, the yes. kind of insurance yes. that is pretty bad. That's yes. Bad. Yeah. Um, I don't know if um Liz Moore in New South Wales has been on the news, but there's so many people that live there that aren't insured just because of mm. the area. Like the whole town pretty much doesn't qualify for insurance because of where it is yeah true so, yeah it's, it's a lot right uh, yeah um hope things this is nature this is mother nature yes, right it is <laughs> yeah. very right okay guys um uh, how are we hi michael min mohit hi how's it going doing good how are you yeah good Good. Hi, Professor. How are you? I'm I'm doing good. Thank you. Thanks for asking, Mohit. How are you? Nothing bad at all. Thank you. Uh, hi, Priti. Hi, Ran. Hi. How are you? Good. Thank you. How are you? That's good. I'm good. All right. And how's your progress going on for your assignment? Can I quickly ask? Sorry. Uh, so I just have a quick question. We've got like you know the starting slide of that of that introduction and the ending slide it's like two extra slides is that okay that's like, fine absolutely fine oh, yeah. and our um audio goes for like 35 seconds extra is that okay as well absolutely fine <laughs> thank you no we're just afraid yeah we didn't want to cut it too much because we we're going to miss out on information just to, to double check no no that's all good all good thank you so much sir no problem uh, professor i wanted to double check the uh submission date hasn't been updated as you were saying like it's going to be up till sunday my my bad sorry sorry i just uh couldn't do that i'll do it i'll do it yeah. leave no it to worries. me yeah so i'll do it um i got one uh paper that that took that is accepted at last so it's on cleaner production and uh I was um, super occupied with that one. So I'm actually publishing that one with Claire, Claire D'Souza. And- uh, Congratulations. No, thank you very much. So you should, you should also congratulate her because she already got four, I got two. <laughs> she got four papers on their cleaner production. And uh, yeah, she's an amazing researcher actually. Um, yeah, so uh, it's got accepted, um, but the last, last two weeks have been very, very, yeah, tiring process on looking into anything we're missing. If it is rejected, then it's a big, this kind of, let's say, loss. So that's why I was really, really focused on that. All right, guys. So, uh, yeah, uh, Mohit, I will, I will update that. Yeah, leave it to me. Just to take another note. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, beside, beside that, any, any other question regarding the assignment? Um, um, you're, you're if, you're not, if we are not good at making the video on that, the software that was said, Mm -hmm. Then we just do this another option in our PowerPoints, like where we can record ourselves and like make a video out of the presentation. Will that be acceptable? We will still explain everything in the video and audio. So how how you how you plan to uh, frame the video? So that's my question. So what what kind of contents you will be using in that? That is one of the um, essential criteria. Honestly, we all have been like really busy, so we were gonna have the meeting after the class. Okay. Like we haven't like had like everything 100% like we were hoping after the class we'll have a final meeting yeah so just for the video we were thinking if we can have a good video it can be either the zoom video mm -hmm. where we just run through the slides and like record ourselves presenting the whole thing mm -hmm. where we will be telling about the company what's what are this uh, the whole SWOT analysis and what our recommendations is for them yeah um but yeah I would like your suggestion or do you do we need to go through that video editor software itself Look, um, it's not mandatory, recommended. Um, that is the, that's the difference, right? It's recommended because your, your presentation always uh, needs to get kind of audiences, right? And as, as you could look into, um, use a simple way, nice contents. But if you, if you don't like to use um, any kind of, let's say, um, Adobe or Premiere or let's say Canva, so in that case, um, I, I would not actually say that that is mandatory, but it's recommended, okay? Awesome, thank you, yeah. No problem. No problem. Um, any any other question, guys? Any other question regarding the assignment? Uh, actually, I have a question. Yes, Ran. So when is our presentation date? Because I mean, I don't know why my throat is really hurt for the last few days. And it's okay. I will be um, putting an announcement for the extended deadline, so you can have a look into that after the session, Ran. Oh, uh, okay. Thank you so much, Professor. <clears throat> yep. No problem. Okay. Yep, easy. Um, yeah, I think we can start our discussion, right? Uh, today we'll be uh, discussing one of the interesting topics, right, on social media, that's brand. Okay, so how we look into um, the brand in the social media world, right? So first of all, we have to look into what is brand, um, how we build brand, uh, a, a kind of interesting theory to understand uh, brand building that is the um, brand equity model, right? And then we look into how um, in, let's say, um, social media strategy can be employed to extend the brand awareness or even the relationship with the customers or even some kind of challenges um, that the marketers do experience that can be also solved, all right? By, by using the social media strategy. So, at the same time, I'll also share with you in one of my projects that I am working on um, at the same time, because that is also relevant uh, with, with the concept that we are going to discuss today. Okay, let's start. So the plan for today's session is as, as usual. So we'll have the topic discussion first in the first part. And in the second part, we'll have um, the case study. Um, we'll read the case and then we'll um, We'll create the breakout room and then we'll answer that one. And after that, we'll do presentation on that. Okay, so let me put this one here. So we'll, we'll look into digital presence, right? So how we see uh, in this modern world, right? Um, marketers, some or other, if you look into companies become tech companies, right? And, and some or other, they try to um, remain on top of the mind. All right, so share of mind or share of voice are very, very critical. And to, to achieve that, achieve these two targets, right? Enhancing share of mind or share of voice, they try to expand their presence, particularly digital presence and different kinds of platforms they do use, all right? So if you look into um, connecting with the internet, they are using different kinds of website, paid or unpaid, right? Social media platform using EDM, uh, or using uh, different ways of managing the contents, right? Um, all these are uh, showing their kind of uh, connection with the consumers so that they are not only informing um, their product or, or the brand to the consumers, how to use it, but in the same time, they are um, reminding them, they are pursuing them, they are convincing them, constant approach to, to the consumers. Um, and this is done through uh, the kind of uh, strategies that we are discussing, the social media strategy, right? 
and and that's why the digital um, presence is is the key because if you're looking into uh, if you're sorry if you're looking into the kind of growth right so uh, growth based on revenue growth based on um, revenue is connected with the uh, market share right but growth based on uh, consumers uh, reliability consumers trust um, all these are uh, connected with the kind of information constant information useful information we are sharing some of the cases we looked into on digital presence right so what kind of um, approach marketers need to use or what kind of let's say approach they have to um, avoid or subvert or adapt right um, as an example, if you if you look into um, the digital presence um, and a kind of engagement, so consumers um, they are they are already become uh, the marketers as well. So marketers, in a sense that they also create value, right? So in the upcoming slide, I will talk about it, the co-creation model, right, by Stephen Vergo. Um, but how we look into um, the kind of information can influence um, behavior, not only the behavior but also uh, it can influence competition as well. And in different ways um, we look into, it can create a kind of community and, and that particular community can influence the decision um, of uh, the marketers or the, let's say the decision makers. So think about when we do talk about connectivity with the digital presence through social media platform, right? So what kind of community we can see, a kind of brand community as you could, I could look into, right? Harley Davidson. So they are the champion, um, brand as an example of loyalty or, or brand community, but how connected they are on, on the social media platform, if you, if you look into that. One of the classic example, um, so one of their loyal customer, that means um, Harley owners group, Hog, right? So that particular owners group members posted in the social media platform, they want to celebrate their 100th birthday, all right, of their, the brand they are using. And then what happened, okay, if you look into, so, all the bikers, right? So more than 100,000 bikers around the world, um, they actually gathered in, in Wisconsin, in America to, to celebrate the birthday of, of their brand, right? So this was showing a kind of um, extreme level of uh, brand tribalism, right? So this is what we look into, the creating a kind of community and showing the presence of, let's say, extreme um, level of relationship and connectivity through the social media platform. Another example, if you look into, right? So nonprofit organization, they can get the support, right? Um, different ways we looked into crowdfunding or, or let's say petition, right? So all these can quickly get the momentum through um, this kind of approaches, right? So as I was indicating to you, um, somewhere other marketers can capitalize from here, but sometimes it can fire back if they are not using it appropriately, right? Now, when we are using, um, the digital presence, we also need to um, uh, understand the way a company or organizations try to explore the maximum out of it. Um, the first thing comes actually their brand, all right? Why brand? Because if you look into the definition of a brand, uh, it's name, logo, sign, design, character, jingle, right? So all these are um, some of the elements of the brand, but it also fits into the definition. And most of these are visible perspective. And that's why we're using this into the um, different kinds of social media platform so that uh, consumers can recognize, they can recall, right? So all these are connected with that. But on top of that, we also need to look into something that is not fitted into the definition on the brand, right? If you look into name, logo, sign, design, these are all visible. But what about the relationship? What about the emotion? What about the psychological perspective, which is not mentioned into this one? This has happened into the earlier cases on the Harley Davidson, the example we have provided, right? So the kind of loyalty, the kind of relationship or kind of resonance that you can see. So that becomes possible when we are using the property step by step, let's say developing the brand. So in, in a particular social media strategy, you'll see that a brand always focus on the kind of desired identity uh, or corporate identity it try to establish and, and different ways it, it try to prove that. Um, think about the core value or let's say core brand essence, different ways a particular brand focus on its positioning. And that particular position is reflected on um, their social media strategy. As an example, if you look into Gillette, right? So we know that uh, Gillette's tagline, if you look into their, um, let's say, um, men's 
um, um, let's say brand segment, if you look into their tagline is the best a man can ever get, right? If you look into the Gillette Mark III Razor. But then uh, they looked into other kind of adaptation close to their positioning approach, what's their positioning approach, the way they try to stand out with a kind of, let's say, um, betterment of the society, betterment of the community, looking into the well-being. And this is where they focus on um, a particular campaign which becomes, um, which, which create a lot of awareness in, in social media platform. When you look into the Me Too uh, problem started, all right, the issue started and then different brands try to um, start or raising uh, their concern. Gillette was the proactive, um, they have used their social media strategy in here. I will look into this one and then we'll talk about it. The Me Too movement against toxic sexual harassment. Masculinity. Is this the best a man can get? Is it? We can't hide from it. It's been going on far too long. We can't laugh it off. What I actually think she's trying to say. Making the same old excuses. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. But something finally changed. Allegations regarding sexual assault and sexual harassment. And there will be no going back. Because we, we believe in the best in men. Come on. To say the right thing. To act the right way. Cool. Cool. Some already are. In ways big Yo, men. and small. I am strong. But some is not enough. So we treat each other, okay? Hey. Because the boys watching today. All right, so that's that's interesting. But if you look into the kind of um, core essence of the brand, all right. So what they try to establish here uh, through this campaign? Anyone? They're trying to establish themselves, I guess, as being on like in a proactive way of trying to combat toxic masculinity and the kind of culture that led to me too and everything like that um i think getting out on the front foot with a ad like this it, it's, it's very effective i thought that was a really good ad yeah yeah so interesting thank you thank you jack uh interesting thing is that if you look into the core brand essence right so we all know about the kind of positioning approach gillette is um always using right this masculinity but the sense they are also trying to expand this is the expansion meaning of the brand or the expansion of the essence meaning of the brand all right so they're also showing that what kind of let's say desired uh, personality or identity the Gillette brand would be inducing into the target audience mind so they do care about the problem that has been happening right so the me too movement and they do support that and at the same time, not only that, they also create a kind of awareness with this with this campaign. And when they use social media strategies, putting this one into YouTube, their YouTube channel, right? So it gives a lot of lot of um, let's say uh, a feedback, positive feedback, and the awareness was amazing. Moving ahead, having a looking into the brand building, right? So how we we look into the core values of the brand that can. Um, be used to create a kind of, um, let's say, USP or unique selling proposition. So think about some of the brands. Um, if you look into Volvo, the safest car in the world as, as a kind of their USP, right? If you look into Apple, um, aesthetic value and in the same way, design and simplicity, right? Angry Birds, entertainment, right? So this kind of meaning needs to be transferred with any kind of um, presence you have in different social media platform and also the strategies you are using. Constant and reinforcing this meaning is very, very essential. 
so that when consumers are not in the digital, let's say, platform, they are in the brick and mortar shop, they can uh, simply recall what kind of information you have already induced through the social media strategy, right? As I was indicating to you earlier, right? So um, the social media-based um, brand building um, is somewhat rather a little bit more advanced because uh, if you look into M2C, that means marketers to consumers, marketers used to um, somewhere rather, if you uh, look into do research and then they do innovation of the product and then they pass the product to the consumers. But things are much more um, diverse in, in both way direction is happening. Uh, marketers are approaching to the consumers as they are the co-creator. So this is what we normally look into. It's very interesting happening, co-creation. The theory has been given by Stephen Virgo, right? So the paper published in JM Journal of Marketing where he said that consumers can be the creator as well. So the idea is not new. Consumers as a creator, this is an old idea to think about uh, someone as, as a normal example, someone goes to the saloon, boys goes to the saloon and, and give a direction to the barber that cut my hair like that. So that is a, also a part of creation, right? So and how we see social media becomes an effective platform to use the co-creation um, strategy. A uh, classic example of a Starbucks, if you look into, right? So Starbucks Frappe or, or, or Frappuccino, they were actually encouraging the customers or consumers or their, let's say loyal consumers or their community, um, close community members so that what kind of um, preference they do have. And based on that, they can send those papers into their lab and do a kind of product development. And this is the way they actually um, expand their um, awareness, market awareness, and also market share. Uh, moving ahead to look into the kind of um, approach that marketers need to look into to make the brand um, much more acceptable, or uh, if you look into a remarkable approach, right? Kevin Lynn Keller, so he's the guru, of branding. So he has published a paper on how to use a kind of criteria um, on selecting all these different brand elements so that it remains on top of the mind, right? So that means a, a remarkable approach to select the criteria. So according to him, these are some of the uh, approaches that we could look into, right? So the name should be memorable. It can be easily, we can memorize it. All right, so it's not difficult to memorize. It should be small, uh, chunky, and that the name comes with a meaning as well, all right? So that uh, it can easily connect with the interconnected nodes of our brain so that we can easily recall it. It should be also likable as well. Think about some of the logos or some of the design or even the colors or the appeal here, um, it's create. It should, be, it should be presentable to the, to the audience. It should be transferable, right? So that means you can expand the category to so think about, let's say Honda, Japanese brand. But if you look into, they have car, that means automobile, they have landmower, they have um, a speedboard, they have bikes, right? So all these different kinds of extension. So uh, if you are transfer from one particular, let's say a platform to another platform that makes or, or carries the same meaning, uh, it should be protectable. We need to register it, right? In, in all different perspectives. So it, it, the trademark should be registered, the name should be registered, and also the website that we are actually um, uh, using that under the brand name, it should also be registered as well. Even the social media platform that we are using also should be registered. It should come up with an authentic viewpoint. So it's, it's not be a kind of mimic of another brand so that if it is a mimic, then, then um, there will be a lot of, let's say, criticism and confusion will be created, right? So then we'll say that we are the follower of that particular brand and it should be adaptable as well, right? So today you are local, tomorrow you will be global, right? So in that particular perspective, you need to actually look into the kind of adaptation you can, you can do, right? And also the kind of adaptation you look into, um, think about GE, General Electronics, you can see that the kind of adaptation they have been doing. On, on their brand elements, particularly logo, the color of changes, right? And they are um, um, constantly uh, keeping the core um, um, attributes of the brand logo, but then they are refining it, changing the color. Another example is BP, British Petroleum. So they have also done the kind of adaptation, right? Because of um, the, the oil spill, they had a problem in the Gulf in Mexico. 
Okay, now looking through the brand building, we, we need to understand a couple of core questions, right? So that, that can literally help us to identify how we can go with the process, step-by-step -step process to build the brand, right? So there are four stages um, indicated by Kevin Len Keller, right? So if you look into answering these four, so um, a particular brand, if you look into the Duracell brand, it's a battery brand, right? So trying to answer the question, and then we'll see that how this particular brand offer a unique uh, or point of difference. And that particular point of difference becomes more desirable to, to the consumers, right? Uh, what do they say, uh, or what do we say as a brand? Right, so we say that we are we are a battery brand. So that means the frame of reference needs to be created. We are battery, we are not a soft drink, right? What do we do? So what kind of performance we have? What kind of ingredients we are using? Where we are from? So all this needs to be answered. So in in that particular strategies in the social media, uh, you are constantly focusing on uh, that kind of um, information. You are inducing this information to your target audiences, right? So what benefits you can offer, what ingredients you're using, what kind of uh, price adaptation you are doing. So how they are informed through that. Uh, how do we behave, right? So what kind of feelings? Yeah, um, think about this one when consumers will be using it. That kind of, let's say, feelings can be fun. It can be joy. Um, sometimes it can be pain as well if you look into the hiking gears, right? So if, if we are going to buy a hiking gears, what kind of feelings in my mind that, okay, I will be experiencing that kind of tiresome work when I'm climbing uh, the mountain, right? So any kind of, um, uh, let's say, um, relevant feelings that you think um, is um, helping you to do a kind of positioning into the market, you need to adapt that. Uh, what do you know um, about uh, the consumers and the kind of relationship with the consumer? So all these four, some rather help um, us to look into to build the brand or also to build the brand equity though. When, when we are building um, the brand, one of the, one of the concepts that I was indicating to you earlier is brand equity, all right? So we have to understand any work that we are doing uh, is focused on one objective, building brand equity or the brand value, all right? So there's different ways we could, we could look into the brand equity, all right? So as an example of Robert Wood uh, talked about brand equity, simple way, the extra value customers perceive in a brand that ultimately builds long-term loyalty, all right? So the brand which has um, more value um, in a sense that consumers will prefer that. And as consumers will prefer that, they will be, buying it, using it, and they will be constantly buying and using it as, as a kind of loyal customer. But there's some other ways to analyze the brand equity, right? So the father of the modern branding is called uh, David Acker, right? David Acker has created a framework on brand equity. If you look into this one is here, whether the brand is available, consumers do prefer it, whether it has a strong loyalty base, Awareness is really high. They are constantly using their promotional approach, multiple different platforms they use. Whether the brand is familiar, it has a desired image or a kind of personality close to the consumers. And it also have a desirable brand associations, right? Um, based on the attributes. Now, one of the interesting things that I'd like to share with you um, on David Acker's work, uh, which is all the published classic work. So he has showed that the equity is market mediated. That means the performance of the brand in the market, and then it comes with an accounting value, right? And that's why uh, the equity goes up. That means if the brand follows all these criteria, if you look into the seven criteria, it, it will perform better in the market. Uh, it will generate revenue, and then the equity goes up. But he's a student, his PhD student was David, uh, sorry, Kevin Len Keller, right? So Kevin Len Keller come up with uh, much more um, uh, adapted approach and in different ways. So he said that, no, I am not gonna, um, um, let's say create the brand equity meaning from market mediated perspective. I will look into the consumer's perspective. So he, he used a um, completely different approach. He said that uh, the brand equity is simply the knowledge about the brand. All right, so brand equity equals to um, consumer knowledge about the brand. Um, he has proposed a very interesting proposition. He said that the brand consumers do buy, or you buy, or I buy, I have more knowledge about the brand I do buy than the brand I don't buy. All right, so the brand I do not buy or do not like, that means I do have 
less knowledge. The mistake is not mine, the mistake is marketers. Marketers were not able to pass or let's say inform me uh, about that particular brand, all right? And, and he said that these are the six stage where you can inform some useful information to the consumers, right? And all these different stages, um, the information you are um, uh, disseminating or passing to the, inform, uh, let's say consumers, you need to use your digital marketing or social media strategies. Have a look at as an example of uh, Apple, right? Uh, we look into, uh, some of you might be familiar with this one because in branding class, we use also use this one, right? So we look into the salience. Um, Amy, you might be familiar with this uh, model, right? Amy Mohit Priti? It looks familiar, yeah. Yeah. What about you, Jack? You're familiar with the model? I haven't seen this one. Mm. Um, not, not so far on my subject, no. Okay, I will. I I will seen it either. Sorry, say again, pretty. Sorry, I haven't seen it either. So. Okay, no worries. Yeah, I'll I'll explain it. Um, just think about think about um the example, Apple, right? So how effectively we can uh, enhance the knowledge of the consumers, right? Uh, look into the top is loyalty. Resonance is loyalty, but the possibility of building a loyal customer, right? Um, in one day. If you look into one strategy, it's, it's, not, it's quite impossible. So according to Kevin Len Keller, this is called CBBE model, customer-based brand equity model. Um, remember the difference? Uh, David Acker, his supervisor, he said that the performance in the market and then the uh, equity goes up. It's, it's all about market performance. He says this, no. As the marketer, if you can enhance consumers' knowledge um, about the brand, about the brand you are working on, then they will eventually uh, like it, eventually buy it. Any brand you can think about in your mind, we are using the example of Apple here, right? So think about first and foremost, they have to deal with the salience. Salience means awareness, right? So when, when they will be using different kinds of um, awareness um, strategies, think about advertisements, sales promotion, public relations, right? And, and using these in uh, different ways in the social media strategy. Consumers know about it. And one thing is essential that um, when you are using the salience strategy, you have to focus on answering who are you. That means the identity of that particular brand. Yes, I, Apple, um, uh, if, it is, if you look into this particular brand, we are, we are a computer brand, right? We are, we are a smartphone brand. So that means it is easily, um, uh, let's say, able to explain to the target audiences or the consumers. It can also create a kind of frame of reference, right? So frame of reference in the mind that what kind of, or what category of the product it is. That is the first stage. And they have to constantly use this kind of salience approach so that consumers can easily recognize it or, or sometimes recall it. The second stage, that's the identity stage. The second stage is the performance stage, right? So performance stage is how this particular brand talks about uh, its unique point of difference. We are familiar with points of parity and points of difference, right? That points of parity is similarity between other brands. Think about Duracell and uh, think about Cole's battery. So both of these are battery, that is points of parity. But Duracell comes with longevity. That is its difference. And Cole's battery is price. So in performance stage, you need to talk about one or multiple different kinds of point of difference. That is, a, that is a kind of unique selling proposition you could also embed here. It can be ingredients, it can be the size, right? Um, it can be um, the way you look into uh, um, the design you are using, all right? All this needs to be fitting here into the performance. And you have to constantly uh, talk about it, right? After that, image, right? Image or there's another um, term has been used by Keller, it's called personality, right? What kind of personality you want to embed into the brand. And as a consumer, consumers will not buy um, the brand which is not close to their personality. They will be buying the brand which is close to their personality, right? So you need to embed the kind of personality you want to um, use, right? So this is where you'll see that, what are you? So both of these, the performance and imagery together defining that particular brand, okay? So we are the Apple brand comes with aesthetic value, um, if you look into an Apple, so it comes with a lot of different kinds of performance um, features, right? So think about um, design, think about security, right? So think about performance based on 
their, their processor, right? And durability as well. So all this fits into here. Personality, cool personalities, the students using it, or the, let's say the target consumers who are using it, what kind of identity or what kind of personality they like to associate it with that, all right? So they wanted to stand out with this showing a smart kind of, let's say personality, or sometimes sometime cool kind of personality as well. After these three, the fourth, fourth one is um, the feelings, right? So the feelings is, um, as I've indicated to you earlier, that what kind of feelings comes to the mind of your consumers when they are using it, or maybe when they are thinking about it. It can be fun, joy, happiness, or sometimes content, right? Or sometimes if it is, um, let's say, a kind of social marketing brand, then it can be fear, it can be guilt, or, or let's say if it is a kind of, um, let's say a sports brand, in that case, we can, we can consider pain as well. So that, that kind of feelings, you need to actually use it in different kinds of campaign. If you look into, you are running um, a social media campaign and you are running an advert. And in that particular advert, you're using the emotional appeal. And that particular brand goes with the emotional appeal because it can, connects with the target audiences, right? Um, think about Doritos, right? So Doritos run a lot of uh, social media campaigns and most of these campaigns comes with fun, fun kind of appeal. And after that, we look into the judgment. Judgment is a kind of um, signal from the mind that, okay, when consumers will be considering to buy, considering to pay, right? So they will think, okay, I'm not gonna lose it because this all fits into my requirement. I know that it is, um, a brand which um, is, is a computer brand. Um, it fits into the top of the, let's say, um, criteria based on the performance. Uh, it gives me a, a kind of desired personality that I do like, or I do believe. Um, I feel good, I uh, feel comfortable, um, let's say, sense of content. And when I'm actually using it, that means the feelings. And that's why I'm, I'm paying for it. The last one is the resonance, right? Resonance is the loyalty most important one, right? So the kind of uh, loyalty that we use is not the loyalty Keller has indicated. Keller indicated that um, it's not a push-based loyalty. It's, it's a kind of empowerment loyalty strategy you need to use, right? So there's a difference between push-based and empowerment-based loyalty. We are getting the loyalty points. It's, it's a push-based loyalty, right? So that means marketers are asking us to um, buy more or spend more, right? Empowerment-based loyalty is that you are informing your consumers to solve their problem, right? So it's a kind of active engagement and, and constantly you are giving information so that they know how to use the product, better use the product, right? And, and, and if they are experiencing any problem with that, running the, let's say, um, um, MacBook Pro, your, your computer, then you are getting the information from them that how to uh, troubleshoot it, right? So in different ways you can, um, empower the consumers, and that is the resonance. And this is where you can see the loyalty goes, goes up. Now, how we can see social media plays a very interesting role, not only one stage, but all the six stages you can look into. Starting from salience still to the resonance, you will find the social media strategies has been employed, uh, effectively employed by the marketer. As an example of Apple, they've been also doing the similar strategies, right? Um, Another important thing that we also need to distill is on the, from the resonance perspective is the brand community, all right? Um, and, and how in social media platform, you'll see that uh, a kind of community plays an interesting role for the brand, okay? Uh, uh, just early 1980, you could look into the community, the sense of community is there, right? It's, it's a kind of social thought, There's, it's always there. Uh, the literature talks about community in different ways, right? In, in sociology, in, in anthropology, we looked into the concept community, right? But brand community, you will see that um, Munich and uh, Ogin um, published the paper first in JM, then JCR, Journal of Consumer Research and Journal of Marketing. And then they start talking about how the brand community been formed and how this influence on the brand community influence on brand, not only brand, this influence on other consumers, this influence on the organization, this influence, it can also influence on the competitors as well, all right? So different ways you could look into. So first let's look into the paper, uh, the paper I have shared here, the brand, brand community paper published in JCR, Journal of Consumer Research, where they find um, from the data, they find out very interesting insight. So what is the behavior of a 
particular community. So when they are um, all connected um, in, in the kind of social media platform, um, they do um, care for each other, right? So that is that is interesting perspective. They do listen um, the op opinion of others and, and they do provide information um, about if someone's know about, uh, think about in a particular product you are using, uh, let's say Land Cruiser Prado you're driving. So you have the Land Cruiser Prado uh, social media, Facebook groups or Facebook community, right? And, and then you'll see that uh, different, um, let's say, um, uh, four-wheel drive owners, they are sharing their experiences, the, the way they actually uh, troubleshoot some problems, or they talked about the new features is coming into the market where they can actually get it, um, all, all kinds of fittings they can they can share with others. It also, also deals with the legitimacy as well. So the kind of brand's legitimacy to them, right? So that is also very, very essential to look into when they do interact with each other. Enhance the loyalty, right? All this kind of interaction uh, it creates the brand loyalty or, or the resonance towards the brand. Another interesting perspective is the rituals, right? So consumers can learn more about how to use the brand, how to use the product, right? In different ways, different situations, different contexts, right? Um, that, is, that is a very interesting way to look into. And this also creates additional um, value for the brand by sharing stories, right? Some, some brands are using this kind of approaches of let's say letting the consumers or encouraging the consumers to share the story. Uh, there's a, there's a um, interesting fashion brand, uh, Black Milk. So they have been, they have been encouraging their um, uh, brand community to share the picture after they uh, purchase the, uh, the fashion items, they take a selfie or take a picture and upload it and they start talking about their or sharing about their stories. Um, when we do talk about uh, the brand building, this is uh, connected with uh, Muniz Muti paper and also Schnauder, they also publish another paper in JM, a kind of framework. Uh, this is showing that how the social media based brand community, some rather create the brand trust or enhance the brand trust, right? So what we can look into the, the factors that is directly um, uh, influencing the brand trust, right? So shared consciousness, caring for others when they do listen the kind of problem or even the experiences and they do care about that, right? Uh, more about learning more about uses of the product or uses of the brand from others, right? In, in different ways you can look into. Um, and, and if you look into the responsibility towards the, towards the community or, or the society. That can create other different kinds of, let's say, deliverables, right? So think about consumer product relation that can goes up, all right? Um, because the exploration of the product or brand uses, and they learn this one from um, the social media on from the particular brand community. Uh, the brand relation also goes up, consumer brand relation, the positive relation towards um, the company to the firm and also um, the customer relation, um, uh, particularly customer to customer relationship also goes up, all right? There's another interesting thing. Um, these are all, all enhanced to build the brand trust, but there's another interesting thing that we are working on now. We wanted to see that whether it can create kind of resistance, right? So we're all familiar with resistance, right? So whether this particular community resists other brand or not, all right? So this is where we are actually working on at this stage. We are uh, we are particularly looking into um, one brand. It's an Indian brand. Um, it's an Ayurved brand. Uh, some of you might be familiar with the name. It's called Patanjali, right? So Indian Ayurved brand. And we wanted to see that whether the brand community, because we have used Encapture. Encapture is, is a kind of um, program that you can use from Invivo. Invivo is a research uh, software. So when you use Encapture, you can capture all kind of social media posts that um, you can find from a particular brand. So we have used any capture for this particular brand potentially. And we looked into all the posts from their, their community, brand community, right? And interesting thing is that if you, if you look into the history of this particular brand, um, they, they have been doing amazingly well for the last uh, couple of years. And one of the reason is that they are their celebrity spokesperson, but most importantly, their community, the brand community and how, how connected they are on, they have other different kinds of cues as well. So think about nationalism, think about patriotism, but that particular community resisting other brands, right? And uh, this is where we are arguing that whether the loyal customer can resist other brand. And, and the particular example uh, we try to look into is Patanjali and we are using the social media data. 
So uh, moving ahead, uh, how social media could be used to tackle any kind of any kind of crisis situation, right? Or or, or, or tackle any kind of social issue or social problem. Uh, in different ways we looked into, right? So we are familiar with the social media firestorms, right? In, in different ways you can look into, there's a lot of negative buzz. The negative buzz is the firestorm, right? Negative word of mouth about a, about a brand. Someone is stuck in the airport, think about the server of Qantas is not operating properly, all right? So the flight delays and people start tweaking and this create a kind of um, firestorm, right? And how to tackle it if we are not proactively um, um, solving or by explaining and, and solving that one, it becomes a big or massive problem. So the paper published in IJRM, all right? So Hans and, 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 and his colleagues, they have uh, coming up with a very interesting model. So the model is that um, constantly they have to um, clarify their position. And if you are using a constant and proactive approach to deal with not only you are um, explaining what mistake you, um, let's say the company has done or they have made, but in the same time, you will need to also uh, clarify our position. So if we are constantly uh, using our community, particularly the, uh, let's say the loyal um, uh, community and, and letting them to talk for us, that's one way of um, overcoming the problem. Another way of explaining the situation all the time all right, so before you are experiencing the problem, you need to explain your position, how you are progressing, moving towards, what kind of gap you have. So all these are mentioned into, into this paper as a kind of proposition. Another unique way to look into the social media strategy to solve a kind of uh, social issue or social problem, right? So Hughes uh, Fish Campaign, if you are interested, you could look into. So Hughes Fish Campaign. So this, this um, literally get um, a lot of awareness uh, after they have used a social media uh, strategy. Let me share this one with you. Um, so um, interesting thing is that they try to solve the problem, all right, in the European Union reasons um, to, to uh, is, uh, think about this one, um, a kind of uh, social campaign um, against the policymakers, particularly the European unions on their policy on fishermen's, right? But it was not successful unless until they have used, um, uh, they have employed the social media strategy. Can you see the YouTube page? Yeah. Let's have a look into this. The Fish Fight multi-platform campaign represents the gold standard in using TV and online media to inspire change in the real world. It's a model of how moving pictures, interactive media, and social networking combine to create highly engaged users who together have the power to bring about significant results. You can sign up to that, can't you? Yeah, 100%. In November 2010, Fish Fight launched a viral video on YouTube highlighting the distressing and shameful practice of discarding, where up to half the fish caught in the North Sea are being thrown back dead. It immediately started to make waves. At the same time, Hugh Fernley Whittingstall was traveling around the UK filming a Channel 4 cross-platform series, drawing attention to the crazy European laws which make discarding compulsory. In the North Sea, I saw tons of prime fish being thrown back dead, because to land it would be illegal under EU fishery laws. 20 quid for one fish. It's terrible. It's, 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 it's a damn disgrace. In December, the fishfight.net website went live with an online petition addressed to EU Fisheries Commissioner Maria Damanaki, exclusive video footage, and compelling interactive editorial content. Hey, how about that? 15,259 signups. Finally, we're getting the public seriously exercised about the whole business of CFP reform. The site worked closely with key NGOs and other Channel 4 chefs, Heston, Gordon and Jamie. Brother, what are you doing? Causing trouble? <laughs> come on, come and have a bit, Tiger. Deep fried canard, everyone. I'm going to tweet and Facebook and do a, a viral video on YouTube. I mean, it's time to get this thing out there. A carefully designed network of social media presences was also launched. 
including two Facebook and two Twitter accounts, interlinked with Channel 4 Food. Stop doing that. Stop acting like a pig. Ah, big fish fight. Then, in January this year, Hughes Fish Fight broadcast on Channel 4 as the core of the big fish fight season. How many of you are going to get behind that campaign? The audience immediately engaged and showed the strength of their feeling through online action. The results of the interplay between TV and networked media were dramatic. One million page impressions were clocked in just three hours after the final episode. During the three days of transmission, fishfight.net received two million page views. 30,000 people took the sustainable fish eating quiz. 4,000 fish and chip shops were added to the macro mission map. 200,000 people liked the Fish Fight Facebook page. And astonishingly, over 660,000 people have now signed the online petition. The campaign went viral, gathering support, including help from celebrity tweeters like Stephen Fry, Dermot O'Leary and Coldplay, and stimulating international debate. Most importantly, the digital campaign started to have an impact in the real world. People all over the country are buying more sustainable species of fish and sharing their recipes on Facebook. After an email from Hugh, over 50,000 people emailed princes, asking them to stop catching so many sharks and turtles in their tuna nets. And princes have just announced that they will change their fishing methods by 2014. Thousands of people downloaded our letter writing toolkit and sent messages to their MPs, asking them to support the Fish Fight campaign. I applaud the Fish Fight campaign. So far, 239 MPs have signed up to the cause. But most significantly of all, in March, the EU Fisheries Commissioner called an extraordinary meeting to discuss the impact of the Fish Fight campaign and to begin the process of changing the law, which will see the end of discounts. A fish fight campaign and so on. This is very important for us, very important. By harnessing the power of television, interactive and networked media in a creative, fluid combination, the fish fight has emotionally engaged its audience and inspired them to take action and to push for change in the real world. The effects on the world's oceans are already being felt. So that was one of the classic example, classic case actually, um, how to um, overcome a kind of um, social issue, particularly the challenge and uh, using the social media strategy to solve it, right? Okay, um, any comment on that? Okay, moving ahead, um, looking into additional strategies, right? Um, so we're all familiar with the chatbot, right? So how social media also effectively use uh, the chatbot and what are the, what are the benefits if you could look into by using um, the, the chatbots, right? In different ways, we look into um, different kinds of platforms. They're all using uh, the chatbot. A couple of, couple of statistics if you look into, right? Um, the Facebook, uh, the head of um, Facebook manager, uh, David Marcus, right? So he has um, published one article, and in that article, um, he he literally tried to unpack the the importance of um, chatbot, right? So um, and also they they are also um, emphasizing on their uh, messenger. Um, so it, according to their the statistics is very very interesting to look into. More than um, nine hundred million active users who are using the Facebook Messenger, right? And um, if you look into uh, different kinds of um, target audiences, which are really, really expanded uh, throughout, who are connected with some kind of, let's say, social media strategy. Similar like um, the Facebook Messenger, if you also look into the WhatsApp, right? So WhatsApp is also a forerunner, right? Um, they, if, you, if you look into um, uh, WhatsApp strategy uh, on different kinds of campaign, one of the one of the classic examples, if you if you look into Hellman's um, Hellman's brand, is mayonnaise brand in um, Brazil, and and they have used um, a very interesting campaign on letting the um, um, consumers to share um, what and um, how they can actually use the Hellman's mayonnaise, what they have in their fridge or in their kitchen, right? Uh, interesting thing is that the chatbot literally constantly. Um, because this is a kind of AI, and this this particular AI constantly um, um, pushing, sending, or pushing the text to uh, different users on the WhatsApp, 
and they, this is the way they can create a kind of kind of awareness right interesting interesting things that in different ways we can see um, the chatbot has been has been used some of the benefits of um, using the social media chatbots right so we can look into because this is an AI 24/7 presence right so um, that is that is a kind of um, overcoming the limitation, uh, humanistic limitation, right? Uh, deliver instant response. Um, we can we can also find uh, based on the kind of uh, information you are using, you can see constant um, responses. Uh, time and cost efficiency. Um, if you are scaling it up, you can look into the benefits. You can also look into the um, uh, user generated contents. You can also look into that. You can increase sales. Um, uh, consumers become satisfied if the information is relevant, and it can also reduce a kind of human-centered error. Let's say someone doesn't have any information or lack of knowledge, that can be overcome with that one. I, I do believe that in the upcoming years, so uh, everything would be um, somewhere rather adapted to um, AI, all right? So there, um, let's say the, even the lectures would be recorded, and then someone will be delivering the AI, a particular AI will be delivering that. So the final thing that we need to also look into uh, the strategies um, on, on the social media approach and also building the brand uh, is the AI DA model, right? So how all this information we are using in social media platform, uh, this is gonna work, right? So these are the four steps we need to deal with, right? So the steps with um, attention, interest, desire, and, and action. Think about you are um, creating the awareness uh, for uh, a particular um, Samsung um, Fold phone, right? So uh, what you are using to create or enhance the awareness, you are trying to use the essential information. It can be the features of that particular smartphone, right? Or it can be the design, or it can be the price. You're all indicating that. And when um, you're using this marketing stimuli, right? The target audiences see this one in front of their social media platform, let's say. Uh, and then some rather they find a kind of interest. Now in the interest is that they do compare and contrast. Um, this is a, um, a stage where the information you are sharing um, to the consumers and the earlier information, or maybe they are doing a kind of research at this stage to do a kind of compare and contrast. And when they find out, okay, the information you have shared is a kind of, um, let's say a unique to them to consider, and they, they start thinking about to buy it. So this is where they start feeling a kind of passion towards um, the particular brand, thinking about how they will be using it in their mind. Still, they haven't buy, right? Uh, and then the um, last stage is that is the action. This is where they uh, they pay for it, they buy it, and they start using it. So AID model is the critical when we are creating the content um, in the social media platform, right? Any question, guys? Any question? Uh, Mohit, Priti, Amy? Uh, not for now. Thank you. No problem. Okay, good. Um, could you please um, look into the case study? Have you got the access to the case study? Anyone read the case study? Jack, Mohit, Michael? I'm just starting now. Good. Um, could you please start reading the case study? All right, so um, after you finish reading the case study, I'll create the breakout room and then we'll start um, working on this one and to answer the question, right? Today I will distribute the question, right? So um, I, will, I will create two rooms and then I will divide the questions, right? Um, we'll, we'll, we'll do it that way. Can we start, guys? Yeah, yeah no worries. Yeah, I'm yeah. reading it now. Let's start, yeah, thank you.
Uh, Mohit, could you please double check if it is updated? Sure. Just give me a sec. Yeah. Perfect, professor. Professor, it's showing seventeen April now. Yep, is 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 gonna okay? That that'll be great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for reminding me. Thank you. No worries. It was more helpful to us. <laughs> no worries. All right, guys, I'm creating the breakout room. All right, so please do join the breakout room and um, you can continue your reading. So when you finish, then you can start the discussion with your um, uh, members in the room. And then one person from the room will uh, be posting the answer in the Padlet. And after that, we'll, we'll be doing the discussion on that. All right. Sure.
I don't think so. We have a Padlet. Oh, we do have a Padlet. Who Sorry. wants to type the answer? We have a Padlet. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if we have like. Hi guys. Hi. Yep. So um, um, I believe you have able to um, complete the reading. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a brief discussion about questions and things. Yeah. All right, so. So you can see the questions at the very end. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, if you look into uh, my parcels delivery, the first question, right? So you need to summarize it. I can, I can divide the questions, right? So you guys can do, um, which one you prefer? So I think you, can, you guys can do question number two. Right. Um, we were discussing like a mixture of all of them. So I think we're okay with doing either. Um, yep. Go for it then. Great. Yeah. So one and two. Um, do you want us to choose? No, no. So it's up to you. Which one? Oh. Number one or two? Uh, guys, what do you want to do? Because I am happy with that. We were talking more about the one right now, <laughs> the own media. Okay. Okay, so you can go with number one. That's fine. So okay. I, will, I will give uh, another another group's number two. All right. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. No problem. Yep. Continue your discussion, guys. All right. Thank you. Nice. No so. Hi, Priti, Michael, uh, Ran. How are you guys? Good, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, good. Uh, We've just finished. Yeah. So I'm just uploading the answers now. Okay, so have you sharing. done one or two? Uh, have you done both? Uh, we did. We assumed because we were room two, we were doing question two. I hope we're right on that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. So that's fine. You're doing uh, two. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Perfect. So uh, Padlet, right? So you are posting the answer in the Padlet? Yep, doing that now. Great, perfect. All right, should be up. Yeah, perfect. <clears throat> That's good. So the room number one, they are uh, discussing question number one. So let them post it and then we can start the discussion. Then I'll take you all to the main room and then we'll do the discussion. Um, uh, Ran couldn't join your group. So he has been um, not able to, yeah, because he's not well, he's sick. That's, That's okay, right? Yeah. yeah. like um they get very uh mixed up in my brain sometimes <laughs> but but um i hope i made sense in in the other um section yeah I got right <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that's fine okay. um, i um, think i'm just making some notes yeah on each yeah. of them i'm just yeah. writing down what uh, what earned media they got, um, like what publications are talking about them. Yeah. Um, and also what they did.
YouTube, like yeah. um, Google AdSense or whatever it's yeah. called. Um, and like they already have some good social media and like yeah. media that they present. Yeah. So their advertising videos would be really good and attractive. Yeah. Um, and along those same lines, I was thinking about like influencer marketing, but I don't know how to, because that's, that's not media specifically. That's like. Uh, oh, no. But like, yeah, definitely. That's one of the points. We're still going to yeah. pay some influencer to like advertise. Yeah, I think so. That's a good idea. Yeah. So, using social media influencers to advertise I mean services. Yeah, I mean, because you have to pay them, like the brands have to pay them regardless. So whether that's um, strictly considered paid media in this case, I'm not 100% sure, but I would think that it would be. It's at least transitioning that way, I think. Um, I listen to a lot of podcasts and hear about ads through that way as well, um, which is like, I guess, modern radio. You could, you could yeah. go the really traditional, like in terms of paid media, you could go like old school and go with TV and radio and stuff, but like, what demographic do you guys think they should yeah. target over there? Like, I'm thinking like big businesses because yeah. they would be the ones listening to podcasts a lot. Yeah, I think mm. so. I think like podcasts can like mimic radio, I think. Um, and you can, um, so I think that, you know, paying for ads that way, like audio, like similar to radio ads, but I guess running it through podcast platforms instead or as well as um, just having another skim over the article am I missing anything in the notes so far for paid media no going no, because we're making yeah. suggestions about what they could use. Yeah. That section of it. We're just making some suggestions. So. Yeah. So yeah. are you, do you think I should add anything to what I've written on the doc? How about or, like uh, in paid media, how about at news channels? Like, on news channels? Yeah. Let's say like they have been mentioned in Forbes, The Times, right? Like yeah. how about like the daily news and everything, uh, like seeing how they have been making big moves and everything like that, getting the exposure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guess like newspapers run um, like online and have subscriptions as well now. So they're still in existence and you could um, create ads that way. But um kinds of traffic i think um, yeah like in newspaper it is a digital platform they can always have a qr code in the newspaper mm -hmm. um to like combine like the old times like the physical media. yeah i mean it's it's good exposure for like the older uh, that like i guess Oh, I don't know. I say older, but it's not really a accurate description. But like the demographic of people that are still uh, either newspaper, like, yeah. reading a physical newspaper or um, have maybe switched to digital and are, are paying that subscription because, you know, like I think sometimes, like I've noticed news articles, like general news articles that come out of newspapers um, increasingly less accessible just because they're behind a paywall but you've got to get past the paywall <laughs> to access that so like it's available but not necessarily um, but I think like just pause for a second yeah um 
I'm kind of just saying what um, each of them are, like owned and owned media and then making suggestions for paid media. So I think, yeah, like we'll discuss. Uh, yeah, if I was like paying for anything, my best like money would be to influencers. Mm, I think YouTube so. YouTube video. Yeah, me per well, me personally, like that's where I will, that's where I'm gonna like yeah, put my, yeah, take my in work. the content of an ad as opposed to like, because I, I don't even watch like free to air TV anymore. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, um, you know, I get all of, pretty much all of my advertising through um, YouTube and like other social podcasts rather yeah. than, yeah, and podcasts rather than, you know, like free to air stuff. So, um, let me run through the questions and see if you're missing any point so um do we want to add like how do they use these strategies to their yeah that's what i was about to say we're missing that little bit um, so, we're missing how the company has used um owned and earned media to their benefit, benefit. yeah um so oh it's literally right here <laughs> um so the blog, um, by covering topics of interest and need to the audience, they're, uh, I guess, <clears throat> providing them with more um, more information to access the website and their, yeah. why their services matter. Mm -hmm. They're making their like website really user-friendly and easy to find information. And then if you can't find the information, like the, like it's all there and it seems like it's fairly easy to, um, at least if you don't find the information, at least contact somebody to ask a question. So that's really, um... so, Sorry to interrupt guys. So um, what kind of, um paid medias you have indicated in your answer, can I ask? We've run, uh, sorry, we've um, written these ones. So we've thought of filming an ad and running it on YouTube, mm -hmm. advertising it through Amazon. Mm, interesting, yeah. Utilizing social media influencers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, running ads on podcasts and maybe modeling it on like a, like a traditional radio ad format um, and then possibly paid ads on news channels um, linking to their urge media through Forbes and Daily Mail yep. um, and other publications and then um, also reaching out to um, generally older demographics in newspapers and that can include like a QR code to QR make it code, easier yeah. to get to the website. And yep. Yeah, in, in our paid media, we will also use our own media. Like whenever we are advertising, we can mention like the, like our brand has been mentioned in Forbes and all the other, uh, like the news channels that mm -hmm. we did not pay for. Mm -hmm. That gives mm -hmm. us like a little bit more credibility on, mm -hmm. on the ads that we are running. On the, on the own media, right? Yeah, like, yeah. so whatever earned media we got without mm. us paying to them, we can mention them. Like we were on the Forbes um, mm. and that's a big name. If, yep. if our company gets mentioned there, when we are advertising, when we are advertising, when the person hears that this company was on the Forbes, that increases the credibility by a lot. Yep. Yep. Well, that's, that sounds perfect. So I think, um, I think this looks, Looks good to me. We can we can move to if you're happy. We can move to the main room. 
Yeah, uh, we'll paste it to the Padlet now. Is it? Yep. Thank you. And I'll take you to the main room, guys. Thank you. There is. All right, guys. Um, thanks for your uh, participation in this case study. Um, yep, um, we can we can start the discussion. Mohit, you are able to paste it. Um, um, yeah, I think Zach is doing it now. Yeah, great. Thank you, Jack. Jack, are you able to upload it? Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. All right. So we have um, the responses from both of these questions. So um, who will be presenting from room number one, guys? Amy, Mohit, Jack. Sorry, I didn't realize I was on mute. Yeah, no, sorry. Uh, so uh, we were discussing question one, which included a look at my parcel deliveries own and media and how they've used these to their strategic benefit. So for this part of the question, we looked at their own media um, in terms of their blog and their social media platforms. Mm -hmm. um, the blog used, used as a way for them to give more information to their users um, and by covering topics of interest and need to their audience, they um, highlight why their services matter. Um, the website is also very user friendly and the blog acts as a kind of conduit between the customer and the website mm -hmm. as well as that. Mm -hmm. The social media platforms um, that they use also provide more of an opportunity for them to promote their blog posts and also put their, uh, I guess, their stake into earned media as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then in earned media, that is where they've attracted mention in such publications as Money Saving Expert. Forbes, Daily Mail, The Times, The Guardian, and TechCrunch. Um, and then my password tracker is able to use their earned media in their own, their owned media, and it serves as a kind of testimonial um, and adds credibility to their work and their services. So the second part of our question was about what types of paid media they could use to further enhance their media strategy. Mm -hmm. And we came up with the ideas that they could film an ad and run it through YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, they could also advertise through Amazon, um, which they may, may be the case that Amazon they might be buying something and then sending it elsewhere as well. And so mm -hmm. my password track would be perfect for that resending. Yep. Um, social media influences um, would be 
very beneficial. Also running ads on podcasts and kind of modeling it on a traditional radio ad format. Mm -hmm. Um, Getting paid ads on news channels, which um, links to their earned media as well in the publications. Mm -hmm. Um, In reaching the sort of older demographics, um, they could run ads in newspapers and include a QR code as a link to their blog or their website. Um, And in addition, with their paid media, they could also use their earned media as uh, proof of their credibility and of the, I guess, the worthiness of their services. Um, Good brainstorming, I can see that. Good work. Very good work. Yep. Go on, please. Um, I think that was the end of our suggestions for yeah. that one. So I think that's everything for question one. Um, did you guys have anything to add, Mohit uh, or Amy? It was really good. Hey, you've done amazing. Thanks. Well done. Well done. Thank you, guys. Uh, group number one, uh, group number two. Room number two. So um, we'll be sharing the answer. Michael? Uh, yep. So uh, for part 2A, mm-hmm. so there's sort of the guidelines that I thought would guide their social media are the UX design principles that they spoke about. So being contextual, human focused, findable, easy, simple, and consistent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, we thought a great type of post that they should do more of is um, videos using the sort of the animated brand persona that they have that yep. they sort of suggested could be used in the future for stuff like TV ads, which would obviously be video type content and like, and sort of tying it in with some of their blogs and FAQs that they're doing. Sort of put that in video content for people who maybe aren't reading the blogs or want a different way to consume content. Maybe if they're on a, platform like TikTok or YouTube mm-hmm. or even Instagram that doesn't really support blogs. Yep. And um, also encouraging customers to leave a review. So it's not just them telling you how to use this platform, it's customers. Yep. yep. From a customer perspective as well and how easy it is. Yep. And all that. Maybe kind of active engagement as well with them, right? Yeah. 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 And um, question number C. Uh, yeah, for the last one, um, we just um, put social media term as sort of a catch-all term for whoever in the organisation, I guess, is responsible for social media, which can obviously change as well, depending on, you know, what kind of content they're putting out. Yep. So, I guess, yeah, social media team, yeah. whoever that might be in the organisation. Yeah. Um, room number one, any comment on um, question number two? Do you have any, anything to add or anything to say? No? Pretty comprehensive. <laughs> no, good work, actually, both of you. Yeah, team. All right, so thank you, guys. Thanks. Um, the answer is right. Okay, so thanks for your participation. Um, now, uh, as you have seen that, I put an announcement on LMS that um, the assignment is due on 17th, right? Now on Sunday, 11.59 p.m. So please continue your work. And any question you have, please um, send me an email, all right? And uh, that's all. Any, any um, questions, guys? Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. So we're, yeah. um, we're, we're, we're in the like final stages of our presentation and we're working now with our voiceovers and everything for the narration of the presentation. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess we're kind of wondering because we're trying to work out exactly how much information we should be saying as opposed to putting it on the slides. Mm -hmm. What would you say would be the maximum acceptable time length? Like, like ideally that we could. 30 30 seconds extra, I would would accept it. 30 seconds extra, I would accept it. Yeah. On top of um, six minutes? Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. No problem. No problem. Look, there, there won't be any penalty, right? So I'll not be so harsh on that, but just try to follow um, the, um, the structure that had, we have uh, used, yeah? And uh, yeah, just um, uh, any other question regarding, uh, thinking about um, 
uh, the contents as you have as you've said that right so um, how you're dealing with the research that is also very very essential to look into okay uh, yeah okay cool thanks no problem thank you guys thank you any other question regarding the assignment mohit all good thank you thank you all right guys so you have a good night and um uh, i will see you next week thank you thanks thank you thanks, see ya bye bye thank you thank you